I uh, have asked Scott Bradley to uh, to be my running mate. Uh, I could tell you all the, the political reasons that I'd like to have him, but other than that, uh, I know him as a man of honor, integrity, a man who understands the foundations and the principles of this country that, that I've tried to articulate myself, and, and I have every confidence in him, so I'll just turn it over to him. 46 plus years ago, I took an oath when I went into the military to uphold and sustain these principles the nation was founded on, and that's not an oath that has an expiration date on it. It's something that I believe you, we must stand with through the remainder of all existence even, and I'm committed to that. Scott, you are running for Vice President of the United States of America and one of the main reasons that you're doing this is because you feel that the Constitution itself is under attack. Oh my goodness, yes. The United States Constitution is the charter of our liberty. This was a great and magnificent document that was given to us back in the late 1700s and it was such an amazing change from all the different types of government that we had on the earth at that time that the nation, as soon as they began to apply it, basically stood up, dusted themselves off, and became the magnificent nation that was every nation on earth has been in awe of. And, and now in America, as we've strayed from those principles, the nation has lost its foundation. We no longer are held in such great regard all over the world. We have challenges here in America that reflect very closely the challenges that were found before the nation had the Constitution. And so we're diminishing. And the things that made this nation the greatest, freest, strongest, most happy, most prosperous, most respected nation on earth have been lost. And it hasn't just happened in the last few years. Some people would try and say, oh, this was in the last administration that happened. It hasn't been the case. This has been diminishing for decades. And we have lost our way in so many ways, but we have a way back. We have a back trail. We have the organic United States Constitution still in our possession we could begin to understand and apply those principles. And that's what it really boils down to. The effort that's underway under the Constitution Party with Darrell Castle as uh, the candidate for president and I as his running mate as vice president, we're attempting to reinstill, reinitiate, reenthuse America about these principles. And I believe that if we do that, this nation will quickly rebound and become again that greatest, freest, strongest, most happy, most prosperous, most respected nation on earth that it once held. And so, so that's our purpose, okay. to restore those principles. So how did this come about uh, with you being uh, up for VP here? Because I'm, I'm assuming you didn't just get up one day and think, oh, I'll run for vice president. How did that come about into your life? Because it's a huge commitment, I'm it is a huge commitment, and I most certainly did not even decide to run for office. I was basically drafted, if you will, to that, that task. Now, I've loved these principles my whole life, and uh, my family could testify to that. We, we eat, drink, and sleep these principles of liberty and proper government. But when the Constitution Party had its national convention in Salt Lake City, in the, uh, Utah, in the middle of of uh, April, Darrell Castle was drafted also out of the party ranks to be the presidential candidate. Now Darrell's a tried and proven man, he's principled, he's got noble character, he's a former Marine Corps boots on the ground officer in Southeast Asia during Vietnam, came back, became an attorney, and he was there in 1992 when the party was born, when it took its first breath. And Darrell is a tried and true character, and I really love and respect Darrell for his devotion to these principles. And at the convention, he asked me to, to be his, his uh, running mate. And, and it is- Shocked. <laughs> well, I thought he was gonna do something else. Uh, honestly, we had talked before he got up and made his, his nomination. And I, th I thought he was convinced he was gonna do something else. Yeah. And so, yes, I was shocked when it actually happened. And, it, and if you see what C-SPAN filmed on, on the convention, they see how long it took me to get to the podium. I was kind of like a deer in the headlights at yeah. that time. It was not something that I sought at all. But with the responsibility that we have, my children, my grandchildren 
need to be able to live under these noble principles. And we are losing them so fast that this nation hardly even resembles what happened even 15, 20 years ago before we had some of these things that just have been crumbling around our ears. So yes, I, I didn't seek it, but I'm more than willing to serve. The Founding Fathers pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Who am I to stand back and let somebody else try and carry the banner if it needs to be carried? Right, so clearly a man of great principle and uh, really a very great passion for the Constitution. And, and you want to bring it right back down to the people. You're, you're saying, uh, we the people, that's a huge meaning to you, isn't it? Oh yes, absolutely. We the people ultimately have the responsibility. We the people. See, what we do is we elect who should be trusted representatives to keep their oath of office, to keep their actions within the bounds established by the United States Constitution. And we the people have become very remiss in that. We the people have sold our souls in a sense. We've sold our votes and of course our trusted representatives do the same thing when they get in office and they barter for different things among each other until ultimately and finally the nation so rarely even represents or, or resembles anything that it could be or should be. So we the people, you and I, people that are in this country for the sake of our children and grandchildren, our posterity as the founders talked about that, have got to re-engage. See, people talk about voting for a third party, throwing your vote away and everything else like that. To me, the privilege of voting is a sacred responsibility. It's a responsibility that someday I'll have to answer to God for. I must stand with principle. I've got to have character with that. And so when people give their vote to someone that might ultimately use that power to destroy something that is sacred as, as liberty and proper government, they are squandering a great gift of God. And I believe that ultimately we will each have to answer for that. Vote for the principle. Right. Vote for the character. Vote for those things that will preserve our liberty for ourselves and our posterity. Right. And if you do that, your children and grandchildren may be able to continue to enjoy some of these blessings rather than have them completely squandered by the time that they come of age. Right. One of the things that we hear a lot about uh, just now especially is um, voting for the lesser of two evils, which is a ridiculous thing to even contemplate when you have a third party that, you know, perhaps not everybody here knows about because it's not advertised as greatly as the other two. Principles that you stand for and you feel so strongly about, we do have a choice. You don't have to vote for somebody that you think is not right. Well, you're absolutely correct. And like I say, it's a sacred responsibility. And those that, that feel this way are really choosing the evil of two lessers. And when they give that, when they give that away, and, and we watch the track this nation's been on with the, the current administration, the previous administration, those that have held office that should have been our trusted representatives, that we should have been able to say, I will, I will trust this individual to keep the nation on track. They've squandered and continue to squander. And so we have got a choice. And the choice really is bigger than just a single election. We've got to continue to build an understanding of these principles in the hearts and minds of the people. And, and I've dedicated my life to doing that for decades before this and for decades after. Some people say, oh, this guy's getting old. No, I'm not. I'm never going to get old. This is something that will be to the end of my last breath. Right. And so this is something that we're going to continue to support and sustain regardless of how this election turns out. Right. We're in this for the long haul because this nation is worth saving. In fact, my book is called To Preserve the Nation and my lectures that I give are called To Preserve the Nation. My focus is preserving that which was granted to us at such great cost and by these founders of this nation. And I, I truly believe it's worth saving. And I truly also believe we can save it. But right. it's going to take an engaged people that are unrelenting in their devotion to the principles and will not back off. Okay. So, that being said, and it's terribly thrilling standing here next to someone who might be the next Vice President, um, how do we get hold of you, Scott, if people are watching and think, boy, this is a man of passion, this is a man I can believe in and get behind, how do they get hold of you? Daryl Castle's website, and again, I'm part of the running ticket, and Daryl is the lead man. I'm, I'm a second-hand rose, maybe, if you want to think <laughs> of it that way, but, but it's uh, www.castle2016.com. And uh, we'll provide some information to you that you could put some of our social media on there, perhaps on your uh, when you when you put this uh, story out, so that you'll be able to see. We do webinars every week that that talk about 
the principles and, and I, my webinars tend to be a little bit more in depth than some other people's are and I, I try to go back to the words of the founding fathers. I try to go back to the, the Constitution itself for goodness sakes right. and quote it and people can say, wait a minute, I understand this now when we get done. So hopefully people will engage and participate in our webinars also. Okay. So um, just a, a great idea if you are floundering like so many people are just thinking I don't want to have anything to do with the two you know upfront people here is a wonderful opportunity for you to get on board get hold of the website and uh, see everything that Scott's got to offer and Daryl as president Darryl, right for sure Daryl is the real deal I'm here to tell you and I'm here to support that effort as well as to preserve the nation as we've said so much all right thank you Scott good luck I've dedicated my life to the proposition that these principles be reinstilled in the hearts of Americans. People ask me how long ago I got started in this program, and I tell them before I was born. And I, I really believe that. <laughs>